The Dennis Patchen Show, weekdays at 3 p.m. on My Network TV, Digital Channel 35.2, or Charter Cable Channel 280. Tonight on Nightline, how do you mend a broken heart? At just 12 years old, this girl has to fight for her life. It's a race against time. Will a new experimental device buy her the time she needs for her heart to heal? And the wine guy. Meet the New Jersey everyman on a mission to cut the snobs down to size and make wine the new beer. From the global resources of ABC News, with Terry Moran in Washington, Martin Bashir and Cynthia McFadden in New York City, this is Nightline, October 4, 2007. Good evening. Most 12-year-olds are unlikely to face the daunting challenge that confronts Bailey Hunsberger. She has a critical problem with her heart, and her life hangs in the balance. Her only hope for survival hinges on an extraordinary but experimental device. If she can get it, it'll prove the difference between life and death. My colleague Vicky Mabry has the first instalment of our series, Searching for a Cure. 12-year-old Bailey Hunsberger is being wheeled into a rare surgery that only a few other children in the United States have ever received. Clamped up here. A surgery that hopefully will save her life. Scissors. Bailey, like most girls her age, loves music and hanging out with her two little sisters. She decorates her room with her favorite heartthrob, Grey's Anatomy's McDreamy, Patrick Dempsey. But that youthful energy can be deceiving. Bailey was born with a diseased heart. She was fine at first, and um, 14 hours later, they came in and said, you have a very sick baby. She has a defective aortic valve that allows blood to back up into her lungs. What did they tell you was the treatment and the prognosis? Well, the, the treatment was surgery. Um, uh, that was the definitive treatment. Interestingly, they, they don't talk to you about prognosis too much. How old was she when she had her first surgery? She was three days old. Hey, Bailey, do you feel like you just kind of gotten a little bloated? A little. A little bit. Bailey's broken heart is no longer functioning properly. In the last week, she has gained almost 15% body weight of fluid just retaining water and uh, so she has a significant amount of heart failure today and it's accelerating. She's back at Riley Hospital for Children in her hometown Indianapolis. She may have just gotten to that point where she's fallen off the curve. But we're not too late to do no, something. No, she's not as good as what she appears. She needs a transplant. It means the difference between life and death. But doctors fear that Bailey's body isn't ready for one. She has scar tissue in her heart, which is causing pressure in her lungs. Doctors plan to cut out that scar tissue. That would hopefully allow the, her lungs to heal, at least to the point where she would be a candidate for just a heart transplant alone. And, and with that, a much better long-term chance of, of survival. And we says it's the worst case. Feel like that's what's gonna I wouldn't be here or be involved if there wasn't a reality to how sick she is. It's getting worse. Doctors worry her heart won't be strong enough after surgery. They look for a backup plan. They've kind of told me everything that they will do and everything that they might do, like I might need an assist device that'll help my heart rest up so that it can beat better. The idea that there was a device that could be implanted, it would serve as Bailey's heart while she was in this period of failure, if you will, in order to bias time to find a donor heart. But that device lives half a world away in Germany. It's called the Berlin Heart. The system basically consists of uh, a pump that functions as the main pumping chamber of the heart. A valve will close, a valve will open, and blood is ejected out. It allows us to do for children what we basically do for adults. 
Problem is, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has not approved its use in the United States. I was shocked that in the United States that, that we didn't have the pediatric machine available here. I think you're under the assumption, or at least I was, that in the medical world, kids come first, they're protected, they're really focused on, and it was, it was quite shocking for me to, to find out that that's not the truth. They would have to get the Berlin Heart through what's called a compassionate use exemption. Was there ever any question that you would be able to get it? Yes, there was. I mean, Dr. Turrentine, her surgeon, had to work with the FDA and had to work with Germany. And I mean, luckily, it wasn't an emergency that we had to have it. We had a month. We had 30 days. Bailey is the ninth American child to be approved for the Berlin Heart. The device is here. It, it's, it's in, so it's going to get checked out through clinical engineering today, and we're good to go. But would she need it, and would it work? season brings, we've got you covered. VIX, from our family to yours. Tonight on Jimmy, it's the man of many talents, Jamie Foxx. He sings, hey! he dances, and the ladies love him. I got that guacamole for you. <laughs> Plus, don't miss Grey's Anatomy's Kyler Lee on an all-new Jimmy, coming up on ABC. Start here. If you believe that it can happen. All-new Extreme Makeover Home Edition, ABC Sunday. Lori Johnson, a passion for people, a passion for justice. 27 years serving Yakima, the Central Valley, and Eastern Washington. Taking on big insurance companies, helping injured victims recover. If you or your family has suffered a serious injury accident or a medical error, to Lori Johnson, called among the best personal injury law firms in Eastern Washington. To Lori Johnson, a passion for people, a passion for justice. I didn't think Referendum 67 mattered. Mattered much. Rick said he didn't give a hoot about a trial lawyer suing insurance companies. I didn't care until... Well, I told him. Frivolous lawsuits mean higher auto and homeowners insurance for everybody. Linda tells me lots of things. Hey, I'm telling everybody that higher insurance rates are bad for my business, my customers, even this guy. Referendum 67 is bad for Washington. Reject R67. I told you so. I hate it when she's right. We return now to my colleague Vicky Mabry's report on Bailey Hunsberger, a young girl fighting for her life as surgeons work furiously to repair her broken heart. And even as they do so, she's in for a treat, a surprise visit from one of television's biggest stars. The lining looked pretty thin. The scar tissue lining looked pretty thin. Is this all your here? Yes. I think she's struggling a little bit. Bailey is four hours into surgery. Doctors remove scar tissue from the lining of her ventricle. I think we're doing fine. I still don't think we're going to be done for a while. In the waiting room, her parents and step-parents receive updates, but the hours grind on. Inside the OR, Bailey's heart isn't responding as hoped. They will have to attach the Berlin heart. I think you can start uh, pumping. Yeah, it's, it's moving. It's going nicely. Clamp up here. The Berlin heart is a temporary measure, ideally just for a few weeks. So the idea is, okay, let's put her on the Berlin. Will allow her heart to heal. Things have gone well. I'm pleased with the way the thing sits in there. The long artery pressures with the VAD may take weeks, maybe months, for the pressures to go down. And down, and down. Heal and get strong enough for a heart transplant. But finding a match is difficult. 
she got, you know, first dibs at, at hearts that came along. And there were, throughout the next four months, there were three hearts that the nurse would come in and, and say, you need to stop eating and drinking because they're looking at a heart for you. And then we'd just all sit around and stare at each other for anywhere from three to eight hours until we, the nurse came back in and said, okay, you can eat, which meant it wasn't a good match. Meanwhile, Bailey is still in the hospital, still with plastic cannulas pumping her blood outside her body. It kind of grossed me out because it was like that, it was all full of blood and stuff. All this attached to a 200 pound pump and computer that run her heart. You just have to take this with you everywhere you go. You're not as mobile as you would be without this, but that's only because you have this cord, and so it's not been bad, because I can walk around. Please worry. As spring rolls into summer, Bailey's long hospital stay makes her something of a hospital mascot. Come on, Rambo. She started it. I intend to finish it. The whole staff loves her. One day, she even gets a surprise visitor. Who's this? Hey, Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Sean Penn? Patrick. Oh, he is. He's that doctor. Isn't he that doctor who saw on, what is that show? Oh, forget it. It's Dr. Shepard. Isn't that Dr. Derek Shepard? Yeah. I'm here for the craniotomy, okay? It's good to meet you finally. Dr. McDreamy comes in yeah. for a consult. Yeah, you, <laughs> and what's that, this part here? That's like the That's outside. Like the pump and the two cannulas right here go up to the heart when all that goes into this pump and helps my heart do the work. Do you play music as well? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's great. I'd love to hear you play. But that's the fairy tale stuff. Mostly they're facing some hard truths. We had lots of those life and death talks and about survival and you know the 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 talk that you never want to have with anybody, let alone your own child. And she came up to me shortly before we went to the hospital for her surgery. She said, I think I know what's gonna happen. I I think I'm gonna need the Berlin heart and they're going to put me on it, and my heart's going to get better, and they're going to take me off of it. And, and she said, and I'm, I'm going to help lots of kids in the process. Did you believe her? No, I didn't. I mean, I was hoping for that, and I was praying for her heart to heal. But i got to admit that I, I never really thought it would. But Bailey's premonition is right. In the back of our minds, we were always kind of hoping that something like this could happen. Nearly six months after entering Riley Hospital, doctors declare Bailey's heart well enough to beat on its own. Transplantation would be uh, an easier proposition for her now, but she's gotten to a point where we think that the risks of just letting her be with her own heart probably is less than the risks of having a transplant heart. After 162 days with an artificial heart beating for her, Bailey goes back into surgery to have it removed. Those are wonderful numbers. I mean, that's phenomenal. You did great. You did awesome. I can't wait to hug her and not feel the device, you know? And she can hug me back and I can hug her. <laughs> I'm pretty happy about this for you. You're welcome. She can finally go home. You look at Bailey Hunsberger, she's a walking ad for the Berlin Heart. Absolutely, and we'd like to see more walking ads for the Berlin Heart. It's one thing to have a hundred individual experiences, it's another thing to actually have a data set to look at so that we can actually define performance in a range of experiences. And it's that putting the data together is the piece that's been missing so far.
Since May, the Berlin Heart has been in clinical trials at 10 pediatric hospitals throughout the United States, the first step in getting it approved for use nationwide. It's been two years since she was on the Berlin Heart, but she's not out of the woods. She's been sick again lately, and she may need that heart transplant after all. If I could get... If I could get better, I would love to keep my own heart, but if a transplant's what I need, then I'll be happy with the transplant. But for now, she's 15 and still doing what other teenage girls do, like practicing for her driver's test. We can't look too far into the future because you don't know what's going to happen. You just focus on one day, get through that day, and focus on the next. I'm Vicki Mabry for Nightline in Indianapolis. <laughs> and as of this past May, almost 100 children in North America have been treated with the Berlin Heart. And we'll continue to follow Bailey's extraordinary and courageous journey. Our thanks to Vicki Mabry. And when we come back, not sure what separates a good wine from a bad one? Well, the wine guy will explain it for you, and all in plain English. Sodium soup, great taste, but how? Sea salt. Campbell's added our one-of-a-kind lower sodium natural sea salt to help give our healthy request soups up to 50% less sodium mm. with amazing taste. Well, I thought you said this was lower sodium. Margaret, it's Bill. I've just reviewed the most up-to-date figures here, and I am liking what I'm seeing. We've got a great rate, and I recommend we move forward. What do you think? I think you should book it, honey. Then you can cancel later, like always. Okie dokie. Want flexibility? Only the experts at Hotels.com let you change or cancel your reservation with no fees from us. Introducing flexible booking. No change fees, no cancellation fees. Call 800-2-HOTELS or visit Hotels.com. We know hotels inside and out. Critics are raving about the movie of the year. What would they do if he went public? They're doing it. Gripping. I'm not the guy that you kill. Audiences will cheer. Oh. I look like I'm negotiating. Michael Clayton, rated R. October 5th in Select Cities. October 12th everywhere. Dudley, Irwin, Newberg, Gonzalez, Brown, Anderson, Taylor, and Stein. Every time we print our name, we're using a ton of ink. So, to save money, we're abbreviating it. Or we could use the easy button. Save 20 to 40% on ink. Rewards restock recycle at Staples. A major storm in the area left a lot of people in need. FedEx Kinko's team member Doug Robinson's home survived without much damage. So he knew his time was better spent by helping others. So instead of working on his own home, Doug decided to spend the next few days working at his FedEx Kinko's, doing everything he could to help customers get their lives back on track. Hear more stories from around the world at FedExStories.com. What would it take to get away with murder? If I was just a normal mom. Maybe it depends on who you kill. Friday, a protective mother's ultimate revenge. I remember screaming. I remember shooting. And why she may soon be walking free. Friday on 2020, stories that touch your life. Everyone has friends. There's online friends. Friends to go out with on a Saturday night. Friends to hang out with and do nothing. Friends who show up on moving day. And then there are the friends who'll be there if someone is dealing with a mental illness. Are you one of those friends? Nightline continues from New York City with Martin Bashir. Would you know the difference between Sancerre and Sauvignon Blanc, a full bouquet or the woody tones of an oak-fermented Chardonnay? As more and more people enjoy drinking wine, there's also the challenge of how to describe it. So now, one wine aficionado has dispensed with the hefty vocabulary because he believes that anyone can evaluate a good vintage. Here's ABC's Ryan Owens. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Ner Chuck. If Wayne's World had a wine aficionado, he'd be it. Ah, the oak monster 
This 31-year-old rabid football fan noticed the New York Jets bucket. He's on a one-man mission to uncork the mysteries of wine. We're changing the wine world, aren't we? And it's somewhere low. It's 15% alcohol content. From the office of his wine shop in, of all places, New Jersey, Gary records a webcast five days a week. He says each averages close to 40,000 viewers. This is a, a kick in the nards, I'm going to trick you sucker kind of wine. Look at this color. This is like eating your shoe. I mean, this is a lot of leather, you know, like the golden locks. And the entire rainbow of flavor exploded into our face. The American dream. Woo! And some of the rainbow even got up our nose. And that's... What's going on with this wine? He sucks rocks, <laughs> eats dirt, anything to explain what you should look for in a bottle. When I describe wine, I describe it how it truly tastes to me. Cap Franc never, ever failed to deliver bell peppers. And a lot of people want to use the wine terms, cassis and terroir and all these terms. And if it tastes like big league chew to me, then that's what it's going to be. <laughs> it has absolutely attacked my palate. Gary's style is brash, but don't be fooled. He knows his stuff. His parents immigrated from Russia and opened a modest liquor store here in 1983. Gary worked in the family business from the beginning and got hooked. He started reading Wine Spectator magazine in junior high. By high school, he was giving shoppers advice on Cabernets and Chardonnays. This is the old store. Before long, Gary turned his parents' small store into the three-story wine library, which now rings up $60 million a year. Americans bought $27 billion worth of wine last year. That's almost twice what they drank a decade ago. And this immigrant son has found a way to capitalize on that. Half his sales are Internet-based, wine boxed up and shipped around the country. The first thing when he starts talking to me about the Internet and all this stuff, I said, it's, you know, the hell ever dreamed. So today we are bringing the thunder. His style has gotten plenty of attention, including from critics, or wine snobs as Gary calls them. They point out he reviews wines he sells, which makes him a good salesman, not a true critic. For you, is this really about wine or is this business? This is not about wine or business. This is about life. This is about people realizing we shouldn't be sheep. Hollywood told us to drink Pinot Noir and now everybody drinks Pinot Noir. He's talking about the 2004 film Sideways, which malign Merlot. And if they want to drink Merlot, we're drinking Merlot. No, if anybody orders Merlot, I'm leaving. I am not drinking any Merlot. And since sales of Pinot Noir through the roof. Gary says Sideways is the perfect example of just how intimidated we've become by all those bottles of smashed grapes. Justin's bringing sexy back and I'm bringing Merlot back. Gary says when picking a red or a white, forget what you've heard and try everything at every price. To prove the point, he set up a taste test with two bottles. Right One now, retails for $18, the other for $60, twice that in most restaurants. Gary said the cheaper was better, and this untrained palate agrees. I would certainly say it tastes better. I do, I do, I did like the smell of that one better, but I don't always smell my wine. Yeah, I mean, if you want to pop a wine and smell it all night, then maybe this is the way to go. But if you do want to consume it, I, I just think this is a great example of where price has no impact on the wine industry. One more lesson. Gary says when you're at a fancy restaurant and the server pours you a taste, quit trying so hard. And so basically the move is... Cool date move. Okay. All right. Smell it. You don't even have to taste it. No. Because I've never seen anybody deliver the salmon and cut it and analyze it and flip it over oh, and be good. like, oh, it's pink, tremendous. What about the fumbling around with the cork? Are there things at the table that you should be looking for in your cork? Is that worth doing? You know, I'm high on doing the Chinese football, a kind of like fling. <laughs> that uh, goes but, over well at the fancy yeah, places. Yeah, especially when you hit the person. Yes, something Gary little, says he still right, has a lot to teach and I'm won't sure be satisfied that's until that's wine that's is, something, that's something I'm well, willing to probably could see. the new beer. No, you know, my hopes are that the next generation of wine drinkers are a lot more open-minded. You know, I love when somebody emailed me and said, that was one of the best wines I've ever had. I never heard of Chenin Blanc before. I loved it. P.S. I drank it at the NASCAR event this weekend. Yes! That's now what we're making progress. Now we're making progress. I'm Ryan Owens for Nightline in Springfield, New Jersey. Wine at the racetrack. That really is progress. Our thanks to Rowan, uh, uh, Ryan Owens. And if you'd like to read more about Gary and the names of the wines in that head-to-head -head matchup, you can go to our website, nightline.abcnews.com. And when we come back, a stunning admission by one of America's greatest athletes. ABC News Nightline, brought to you by IBM. What is it? 
Look at this. Looks like a giant ball of cables. It's getting bigger! It's getting bigger! Ned, what does it all mean? It means we got an IBM Blade Center. The smartest way to optimize our IT. Easier to deploy, more flexible. We don't need all those cables anymore. The IBM Blade Center and Quad Core Intel Xeon Processor. of Centrum Silver, I've got a big announcement. We've been reformulated! <laughs> um, when you say reformulated, are you talking... Relax, we still help protect the health of people over 50. Oh. And now we're better balanced to work oh, together. No, you. Like more C and E to support natural cell repair. I love this antioxidant. That's me. Working better together... From A to Zinc. New age-adjusted Centrum Silver. From best-selling author James Patterson comes his first series for television. You ready for this? The new Friday Night Thriller. Let's catch a killer. Women's Murder Club premieres Friday, October 12th, 9, 8 central on ABC. Start here. You can count on the heavy-duty stopping power of new Toyota Tundra. Big stuff in motion tends to stay that way unless you apply appropriate force. Research proves new Tundra's massive brakes apply superior force even under the most demanding conditions. New Tundra has built Toyota tough in America. Special low financing and customer cash back make today the right time to see your Northwest Toyota dealer. Bud Clary Toyota, you can count on us. Just a better truck, that's driving the move to Toyota. If you're injured on the job, you need an experienced attorney. Workers' compensation is a specialized area of the law with its own rules, procedures, and judges. I'm Tim Hamill. For almost 10 years, I was an assistant attorney general representing labor and industries. But now, I fight for injured workers. Bothwell and Hamill. Call toll-free 1-888-665-8630. From the four corners of the world, from the ancient disciplines of the martial arts, comes the most intense hand-to-hand -hand combat event in the history of televised sport. Get ready for International Fight League's Battleground. It's the extreme physical challenge that proves pain is nothing but weakness leaving the body. IFL's Battleground. The world loves him. This child prodigy has been an inspiration to generations. Find out why we've named this American icon our person of the week. Tomorrow on World News with Charles Gibson. And Monday, World News with Charles Gibson presented with limited commercial interruptions. According to the Washington Post, one of America's most successful athletes of all time will tomorrow admit to using performance-enhancing drugs. According to the Post, Marion Jones, who won five medals at the 2000 Olympic Games in Sydney, now says her former coach, Trevor Graham, gave her a substance called the Clear, and she only realised what it was when federal agents confronted her in 2003. She's previously maintained that she never took any kind of performance-enhancing drugs, and this despite claims made to me by convicted ster steroid dealer Victor Conti in 2004 that he also gave her drugs. After I instructed her how to use it and put the needle on, and she did the injection with me sitting right there next to her. Right in front of you? Right in front of me. Where did she inject herself? In the leg. She, Marion didn't like to inject in the stomach area. Um, she would do it in her quad, front part of her leg. And I spoke to Victor Conti this evening, and he said that he was glad at the news of Marion Jones's admission. And that's our report for tonight. I'm Martin Bashir for Terry Moran, Cynthia McFadden, and all of us at ABC News. Good night, America. <laughs>